There's a lot of people amongst us that don't believe that nutrition, exercise, lifestyle actually matter when it comes to the current public health problem. They think that, hey, junk food and COVID, like there's no connection. But I would like to share with you just a small case study. This is an actress known as Melissa Joan Hart, who recently contracted the virus and shared a lot about this on her social media. And the media has been talking a lot about this because she was fully immunized and she blamed actually her children's school for not mandating masks, which I have issue with because you're like, how is this your kids' kids' problem or the school's problem when just a few days ago you're actually at Disney World without a mask? And I just want to set the groundwork for this this podcast, this session, this video. She does a lot of also paid endorsements with various ultra processed refined food companies like uh, Intamins and these these uh, waffle companies, Lego, Eggos, whatever, Lunchables, and these things. So uh, I think it's an important reminder to all of us that nutrition really matters. Nutrition influences our body's illness trajectory. So again, junk food doesn't cause this particular virus to get inside you, but if it gets inside you, it dramatically influences your outcome if you are not eating these hyperpalatable, ultra-processed foods. Now, as we go on in this video, I I just want to remind you that we're going to share some science from some uh, different researchers that I think you might find interesting. So let's review the video that Melissa Hart posted where she talked about how she's having a rough time with the COVID, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. So here we go. I got COVID. I am vaccinated, and I got COVID, and it's bad. Um, It's weighing on my chest. It's hard to breathe. Um, I'm mad really mad because we tried and we took precautions and we cut our exposure by a lot but we got a little lazy and i think as a country we got lazy and i'm really mad that my kids didn't have to wear masks at school that's frustrating on a lot of levels because blaming your kids as school you could have told your kids to wear a mask if you're that concerned right? No one's saying you can't mask yourself or your family. No, you can do whatever you want. You can eat ice cream all day. You can mask your family. You can mask in your car. No one's saying you can't do that. But blaming other people for the illness that you contracted, that we've never done that as a society. When have we ever blamed other people for getting strep throat or chicken pox or the common cold? We've never blamed other people. We never blamed the person at the grocery store that coughed 100 feet away from. We never blamed anyone. Why are we all of a sudden blaming all these other people for our own actions? For example, Melissa, just a few days before she got contracted or got ill with COVID-19, she was here maskless in Disney World. All things considered, she probably contracted a virus while traveling to Disney World. I don't know her specific example. Let's please stop blaming our children. We know that only 14% of all the cases have been in children, okay? Now, let's talk more specifically about the science of hyperinsulinemia and hyperglycemia as, as it relates to immune system health. And as we do that, we're gonna share some food pictures that have been recently shared by Melissa. Now, again, I'm not trying to pick on her, but I think I know there are a lot of people out there who really don't think that there's any connection whatsoever between the foods that they eat and their body's immune system health and overall longevity, heart health, and everything like that. I know so many parents who are just fastidious, you know, maskers with their children, yet at the same time, they take them to the worst of the worst fast food restaurants and think there's no correlation there. So here we are. Melissa shared this on Instagram just a few weeks ago here. She's having ice cream with an ice cream cone double scoop, okay? Look, we all love ice cream, okay? I like ice cream periodically. You get it in a cup, you get one scoop, and this is a treat once a month, okay? A few weeks after that picture is a root beer float. I'm having a root beer float here with orange soda and chocolate ice cream. You might say, well, Mike, you know, come on, you're you're being a little critical here. These are probably one-offs. Like, she probably doesn't eat this way all the time. Plus, diet has nothing to do with immunity, right? You might be saying, okay, well, let's continue on and watch this video. So this is an ad here, a paid promotion. Mornings are crazy in my house, but that doesn't mean uh, that you can't have fun too, thanks to Eggo Waffles. Uh, and so we know that this is hyperpalatable, ultra-processed, crappy food. So here's the video of her doing a promotion uh, telling parents that they should you know, feed this to their children. Eggo is launching a new waffle called the Egoji waffle and it's just like it sounds. It's an Eggo waffle with fun faces on it. Look, smiley face. 
heart eyes face starstruck smiley one right i know my boys are gonna love these i can't wait to show them now you might say again mike this is a one-off you know those root beer floats and all that well here's another picture from may 19th uh the the caption here is ice cream for breakfast sure trying to uh be the ante of the year uh, here's just a few weeks later, breakfast is served and it's a bunch of donuts. Okay. With her children. Now here's a paid promotion with, uh, Entenmann's, which is these Entenmann's minis. These are perfectly sized, individually wrapped cakes, pies, brownies, and more. So there's several different paid promotions here with, uh, Entenmann's, which is a, a pastry company. Now here's yet another video, uh, of her promoting Lunchables. Now, as a kid, I remember being excited about Lunchables because this was like the, the ultra processed package, hyper palatable uh, food, right? So essentially she's promoting the fact that these are quick, they're easy, parents are busy, you're stuck with online school, whatever. So just give your kids Lunchables. Now we have ultra processed crackers, breads, uh, and probably you know pasteurized cheeses in there. We also have uh, ultra processed meats and things, none of which are healthy, none of which are good for kids, none of which support kids' immune system health uh, and, and all of that. So not really, uh, again, a good track record for, you know, all these foods. And again, we're going to get to the science in a moment. I'm not trying to be super critical here, but I want to give Melissa some credit. Around Christmas time, this was December 2020. She's here deadlifting. This is a video for deadlifting, which got actually 115,000 views. So Melissa, good for you for uh, sharing with your audience that you should exercise. Now, unfortunately, I didn't see a lot of other exercise uh, videos besides that. Now, uh, again, for those of you that are like, Mike, you're being a total jerk. Here is a Christmas picture. It says the four elf foods. We have candy, candy canes, candy corn, syrup, and the hashtag is sugar. Okay. So look, we have someone who has, bless her heart, probably means well, you know, is trying to she, she likes food. We all, you know, I used to love sugar, processed food and all that. It wasn't until I learned uh, through books and things when I was a young boy, body, learning how to you know build muscle, bodybuilding and all that, that I learned that sugar is not so healthy, okay? So I'm trying to share with you an example of someone who did everything right. The masking, the distancing, the stay home, the mask the kids at school, uh, two immunizations and the whole thing and still got sick. Now, hopefully... Her, her illness is short-lived and she's protected, you know, from the immunizations and so forth and, and doesn't have to go to the hospital and, and certainly doesn't have any you know, long-haul symptoms and all of that. I hope that is the case. I sincerely do. But I think we can all learn from this and maybe you can share this with a friend or family member who kind of doesn't understand that there is a connection. And, and that's where today we're going to talk about the science. Uh, one paper in particular, the title of this, and, and by the way, friends, uh, what I will do in the description here uh, in the show notes is linked to a bunch of other videos. We've been talking about glycemic variability as it relates to immune dysregulation for a very long time on this channel, but particularly around this current public health problem since March of 2020. So this is, again, not new information. The science has only been getting stronger and there's been more and more data here. The title of this paper, and we're going to dive into the details, is hyperglycemia without diabetes and new onset diabetes are both associated with poor outcomes in COVID-19. So again, this one is for the people that say, Mike, junk food doesn't cause COVID-19. You're right. Junk food doesn't directly cause COVID-19, but you know what it does? It makes outcomes worse. And so we, and by the way, the immunizations, no matter how you feel about vaccine passports and this whole thing, what the immunizations have been shown to do is reduce disease severity and death. Now, what we know here is people that have better blood sugar control have a reduced disease severity and reduced death, okay? If we could get only people as much excited about low-carb uh, foods, getting rid of sugar and ultra-processed, hyper-palatable foods as we could getting them excited about other things, that would be amazing, okay? So we know that nutrition does play a role. And so here is some of the facts here. Type 2 diabetes acts in synergy with SARS-CoV-2 infection to increase progression, severity, and mortality from COVID-19. So again, you don't get this infection from eating junk food, but if you're eating junk food, it makes the infection worse. I, I, look, I've said this a million times. I don't even, it gets frustrating that here we are 20 months later and I still have to say this, okay? We have shown that type 2 diabetes, and by the way, type 2 diabetes, the diagnosis of this is a fasting glucose over 125 and a post-meal glucose, I think it's over 200. Uh, so it's not like if you have a fasting glucose of 123, 
suddenly you're not diabetic. This is a spectrum. So we can replace insulin resistance with type 2 diabetes. So uh, in this paper, uh, I just wanted to clarify that because a lot of people think, well, I don't have diabetes. My doctor said I'm pre-diabetic. Well, yeah, you're on the path of pre-diabetes. A lot of people are pre-diabetic and they don't even know it. Okay. We have shown that insulin resistance and prediabetes acts in synergy with SARS-CoV-2 infection to accelerate disease progression, increase severity, and heighten the mortality risk of COVID-19. We have discussed the mechanisms whereby hyperglycemia contributes to the cytokine storm, characteristic of severe COVID-19 infection by stimulating monocytes and macrophages to produce interleukin-1-beta, interleukin-6, and TNF-alpha in the airway epithelium. So again, We're not saying that eating donuts causes you to get the virus. We're saying that if you consume those foods, your illness is going to be much worse than if you didn't, okay? So these things are connected, my friends. Now, here's yet another recent paper, the effects of glucose at admission on COVID-19 mortality. There's many other studies that have found this. So if you go to the hospital and you're sick, for example, hopefully this doesn't happen to Melissa, but it's probably happened to tons of other Americans where... They're at home, their breathing is labored. I feel like, oh my gosh, I need to go get on some supplemental oxygen, so I'm going to the emergency room, and then maybe you get admitted to the ICU and so forth. If your glucose is super physiologic at that point in time, various studies have confirmed, after adjusting for all these other variables, age and all of this, that your disease course is gonna be much more severe. Okay, so that's what we're saying, friends. Again, I know this is hard for some people to grasp mentally because CNN and NPR and MSNBC and ABC and all the networks, they're not talking about this. They're treating it as though every single person has the same susceptibility uh, to death and severe disease, which is scientifically inaccurate. People that have underlying health conditions caused by eating ultra-processed junk foods, such as featured in these screenshots that I shared with you, are at an increased likelihood of having a poor outcome. Not only poor outcome from this infection, but a poor immunization response, which again is a travesty that the media is not talking about this, that our body's ability to respond to an immunization is actually influenced by, uh, you know, the, the, the efficacy of that is influenced by our exercise choices, our sleep habits, and our nutrition. So that should be Frontline news. Now, as I finish off here, I do want to let you all know that that my name is Mike Mutzel. I'm grateful that you're tuning in. Uh, Thanks. If you enjoy this content, you can hit that like button. You can share this. Also, I want to leave you with this image. Friends, I've been sharing this message. This is nothing new. So you can hate the messenger. You can hit that dislike button. Say you're such an a-hole, Mike. You can do all that. Note the date on this. January 31st, 2020. Okay. I've been sharing with you this message from the rooftops before pretty much anyone in the health space saying, guys, nutrition is going to influence how we solve this public health problem. Why do I, am I God? Do I, am I all knowing? No, I've been in this nutrition and medical space since 2006. I've had doctors who have been treating chronic infections from Lyme, Borrelia, Babesia, uh, Epstein-Barr virus, cytomegalovirus for years, okay? I've been friends with them, work with them. I've uh, you know, been in business with these individuals and guess what? They always, always, always tell me, friends, uh, no matter what chronic disease they are treating, what, whatever it is, especially an infection, you have to cover the foundations, sleep, exercise, movement, whole food, gut health, uh, micronutrients. This is the foundation. This is the foundation for, for managing infections, any disease. If that is not covered, good luck trying to manage that, okay? So the problem here is, is this subset of so-called integrative or functional medicine, it, they're educated in wellness and nutrition. And unfortunately, the individuals in infectious disease don't have any education around that. So that's why you're not hearing those messages. But I just want to sh- leave you with this tip that any functional medicine doctor worth their salt that is treating complex chronic illnesses, and it seems that long haul COVID is, is a syndrome of sorts, We need to address the foundations, micronutrient deficiencies, insufficiencies, movement, stress reduction, meaning and purpose and relationships, social connections, gut health, getting rid of some of the persistent organic pollutants and endocrine disrupting chemicals in your environment, filtering your water, getting good fresh air. Uh, The whole, there's a lot that goes into this and we're being told a very small amount and that's probably just due to the fact that these people don't know this stuff. They just don't know. They haven't been trained. They haven't dealt with something like this. And so we're trying to spread this message. 
And thank you for being here and being part of spreading this message. I'm grateful that you're listening here on iTunes. Thanks for subscribing. Thanks for leaving us any feedback, any reviews. That is very helpful. Thanks for leaving a comment on YouTube. And if you want a shirt like this, you can't beat this if you're eating this. And this image right here is donut. Uh, it's a, a bacon burger and uh, a soda pop. So these are available at, at our sister company, Myo Science Nutrition. I'll put links below, friends. We got to spread the word that nutrition is medicine, exercise is medicine. Thank you for being part of this amazing, growing momentum. We're we're really impacting a lot of people. I'm seeing it now. You know the engagement, the responses. People are waking up to the fact that we need to make health the main thing going forward. So super, I get chills when I just think about it. So I'm just so honored that you're still here, that you're sharing this content. Bless your heart, Melissa. We hope you nothing but the best in your recovery. Talk to you all soon. Bye now. Yeah.